Alright, hey guys, it's Asha. Welcome back to Reading with Toby. And today I finally have a book haul for you all. I am excited. I've been collecting these books since my last book haul, which was in December, I think. Yes, right before Christmas. So these are books that I've gotten for Christmas, for my birthday, a lot that I bought. I'm looking and I have bought a lot of books as well. <laughs> but I mean, that's since like January on. So it's been a few months. I do have quite a bit of books. And yes, I thought I would go ahead and do this before I move and put all these books away. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I did separate them into some sort of categories. So first we're going to start off with my um, gifts that I've received. Um, so I think I'm just going to kind of pick them up and show you. Yeah, because I don't know how else. It's going to be kind of all over the place. <laughs> I'm going to have to go quickly because I have a ton of books oh my gosh I have a lot so let's quickly go through okay so the first little stack are ones that my sister picked up for me and these are both Christmas and birthday gifts that she got so first we have the dream thieves by Maggie Steve Otter this is the second book in the Raven cycle I only read the first one and I have been meaning to get to the rest of the series obviously I am really excited about this because I know you're following Ronan and he was definitely my favorite character in the first one I think I'm gonna have to reread the first one though before I start this but I'm super excited to have this now she also got me when no one is watching by Alyssa Cole of course this is a thriller set in Brooklyn and I've heard really great things about this. I can't wait to read it. Then she got me a graphic novel. So first we have Teen Titans Raven by uh, Cami Garcia. Yes, so I love this. I saw this. This is kind of an older collection, but they came out with a ton of these like superheroes. They got various authors to write graphic novels about different Teen Titans. And this one is Raven. I also have um beast boy but i don't know where it is i think my little brother is reading it but he got me that for my birthday too i'll put a picture here um so yes i'm super excited i haven't read it yet he read it and he said it was pretty good here's an example of the art style it's illustrated by gabrielle piccolo so yes this is just following raven in high school i'm pretty sure we got that one and then she got me um saga volume three for I don't know birthday or Christmas one of those I have only read the first volume and I really liked it it took me a minute to get into it but I really enjoyed it this is a sci-fi I think a lot of people know what this is about as well um see so open it up I don't think this is spoiling anything just so you get an example of the art style so yes I'm really excited to finally be able to read the rest of these because this I feel like this would be such a good one to binge Yes, I really like this cover as well. So those are all the ones from my sister. Okay, the next book is uh, one that my little brother bought me for my for Christmas, that's right. And that is 50 Words for Rain by Asha Lemmy. This is a signed first edition, so I know he was super excited to get it for me. There's the signature. This is a historical fiction, and I have already read this, and I did a reading vlog, so I will link it down below. I'll link any reading vlogs that I mentioned for books that I've already read down below if you want to go hear more but yes this is a historical fiction following a mixed girl in japan set during world war ii kind of set during world it's like set starts with the war in japan world war ii but then it follows her throughout her life and she is half japanese half black and it's just about her coming to her identity feeling more japanese and but also being half american during the whole war and it was really good i've already read it and i really loved it even though it's like a thick chunky historical fiction it was really great i think a lot like everyone would love this all right next we have two books that were sent to me for my birthday from subscribers which was so nice one of them i was expecting because she emailed me about it which was so nice thank you so much and then the other one was a complete surprise so that was also a lot of fun all right so the ones that i got for my birthday this one here Stuart turton's the devil and the dark water oh my gosh seeing it now makes me really want to read it again i read the seven deaths of evelyn hardcastle last year and i loved it so much i thought it was so good so i'm definitely down to read this one i think this is similar paranormal murder mystery but you're on the seas and you're on a ship so i'm super excited about this this is from veronica thank you so much veronica i love it so much and um she sent me a little cute note and i will link her instagram it's the crafty veronica reads down below if you want to check her out i really love this these end pages like look at this it's a map of the ship that is so cool yeah this definitely makes me want to read it holding it in my hands now <laughs> and then the next one from a subscriber but well, this one was a complete 
surprise which is crazy this is from Kehlani from Kehlani Simply Me which I'm sure a lot of you guys already know her of course I will link her down below I didn't even know she was a subscriber of mine I didn't even know she knew about me I discovered her during quarantine so it's so crazy that was this was the sweetest thing so this is the Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Shark Bordy. I read the first one last year and I enjoyed it um, I did not like the first 200 pages. I thought it was too much world building, but once we got into the actual meat of the plot, I was really enjoying myself. So I think this is going to be great because it's just going to be the plot. I don't think there's going to any, be any more world building. So this is the second book. Thank you so much, Kaylani. I love it so much. I can't wait to finally get to it. A nice chunky fantasy. Oh, just in case you don't know what this is about, this is an Egyptian inspired fantasy. So it was, it was pretty good. These were Christmas gifts from my friend. He went a little crazy as he tends to do with giving me gifts. Look at this, these are all Christmas gifts, which is crazy. So I'm gonna quickly run through these. First we have Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This sounds so good. I think this is like a thriller, end of the world, post-apocalyptic. So these two, um, characters Amanda and Clay go to an Airbnb but then they get a knock on the door where an older couple who claims to own the home has arrived there in a panic and I think like the world is literally ending and they're finding out through um, the news what's actually happening but they're kind of like remote and set back and I recently saw I'm pretty sure the same book I saw I saw drinking by my shelf she talked about this book and she thought it was crazy so I'm super excited about this I'm thinking about reading this uh, next month for Asian Readathon if I can get it to fit in one of my prompts for my May TBR. I'm, re I'm really curious about this and I really like this cover. So we have that one. And then some of these he got me I've like never heard of. I think I had them on my Goodreads TBR and that's how he found out picking them out for me. But you know sometimes you just add books on there and you kind of forget. I think this was one of them. A, cos a, co eh. a Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill. So it says Noah Turner, I love the name Noah, Noah Turner sees monsters. His father saw them and built a shrine to them with the wandering dark and immersive horror experience that the whole family operates. Oh my gosh. Noah Turner sees monsters, but unlike his family, Noah chooses to let them in. What? And then there's, they have like a horror house that you can see the monsters. Okay, that sounds really good. <laughs> That's so funny. That sounds so good. Oh my gosh, that'd be a good October read. Okay, so I'm excited about that one. <laughs> then he got me Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. Oh, I love this cover. So this, of course, is a dark academia, which is the whole reason why I wanted to read it. I have heard some mixed things about it, um, but since I have it, I'm definitely going to read it, of course. And it is a series. I really love this cover. Um, and this is the... There's a map inside. So I think this is a dark academia, but like fantasy. So there we go. And then this is another one that I w never, I don't think I actually heard of this one. I think this one he just got me because the people in the bookstore recommended it. And this is The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood. Um, let's see. What if you knew how and when you will die? I don't know how you say this uh, character's name. Swarcy does she will climb the mountain enter the shrine of the unspoken and gain the most honored title sacrifice but on the day of her foretold death a powerful mage offers her a new fate leave with him and live turn away from her destiny and her god to become a thief a spy an assassin the wizard's loyal sword topple an empire and help him reclaim his seat of power but sorcy will soon learn gods remember and if you live long enough all debts come due that sounds really good as well yeah I'm excited for that one. All right, and then the last book he got me is this one here. I think this is a literary fiction, Migration, by Charlotte McConaughey. And I have seen this everywhere, but that does not mean I know what, it, what it's about. <laughs> um, let's see. Franny Stone has always been a wanderer by following the ocean's tides and birds that soar above. She can forget the losses that have haunted her life. But when the wild she loves begin to disappear, Franny can no longer wander without a destination. She arrives in remote Greenland with one purpose, to find the world's last flock of Arctic terns and track the final migration. So, yeah, so it seems like it's just going to be a sweet, sad... Um, story with lots of nature and that cover is also really pretty so there we go and then one last book that he got me for just because that's what he said is Grey's Anatomy it's a beautiful 
Barnes and Noble edition. If you guys don't know, I am in medical school. I actually graduate in like three weeks. No, four weeks. In like a month. Isn't that crazy? Oh, I can't believe it. Anyway, so <laughs> I have been wanting this to put in my uh, apartment and like set out and decorate it is just obviously the Grey's Anatomy with beautiful illustrations. And I cannot wait to have this in my apartment when I move. That's the end pages and I love it so much. So love that. All right, so the next stack of books are all books that I found at various thrift stores. The first little set are from um, a video that I did go thrifting with me, like the second one that I did. I will link that down below if you just wanna watch, if you wanna watch that. But I'll just go through these really quickly, the books that I found. So I got Circusa, Circusia, I'm not sure, <laughs> by Delia Efron, and this is just a family thriller set in Italy. I got The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, and this really cool, old school edition I love it so I think most people know well actually I don't know what most people know what this is about I just know this man he goes to this alien planet where all the people are of one sex and uh, he's forced into a subtle planetary intrigue where he is the pawn and his future is the prize so it sounds really good classic sci-fi that I need to read I picked up Luna New Moon by Ian McDonald. This is a series, I believe a trilogy, and it is a space thriller set on the moon. Does that not sound amazing? <laughs> and you're following a family, I think, who is trying to keep the um, their mom to continue having the power, but I think some of the family is betraying the family. So it's supposed to be really good, and I'm excited about it. And the last book I found is this old but famous mystery, I've never heard of it though, it's called An Instance of the Finger Post by Anne Pierce. It is a giant mystery and it's set in 1663. Someone gets murdered and you're finding finding out who did it, multiple characters, I don't know. It run, won a ton of awards and I love a good mystery. So I'm actually really excited about that one. So those are all the books I got in that little haul there. So the next one, my allergies are going crazy. The next stack are ones that I found at obviously at other thrift stores throughout the year. Oh, hold on. So I did get Saga Volume 2. I actually, I may have shown this one already. I just had that feeling. I think I may have shown this one, but I got Saga Volume 2. And you saw my sister got me Volume 3, so now I can read Volume 2 and Volume 3. Definitely going to do that soon. I got this little version of The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. I do have uh, the gorgeous hardback but I tried reading it last year because this is this is one of my like books on my list that I need to get to I think it'll be five stars and I tried reading it but the font was so tiny in that hardback it was actually giving me a headache <laughs> so I found I wanted this version here paperback where the font is a little bit bigger I mean it still looks tiny on there but it's a little bit bigger than in the hardback so I thought this would be easier to read as well I can like throw this in my bag when I move, like read it on the train and stuff. So I'm super excited about this. I definitely want to get to The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. This is a book that I like can't believe I haven't read yet. I need to get to it. All right, then I found, this one was super exciting to find at Half Price Books. This is Fox Slow by Eleanor Wasserberg. I have had this book on my TBR for years, years and years and years. I like could not find it anywhere in the US. Um, it was only out in the UK, so I was gonna buy it from Book Depository. And then when I finally went to buy it, it was like sold out, I don't know. But I found this here in the state at um, Half Price Books and I was so excited. So this is like a horror book about two kids and a cult. And I think there's maybe a little bit of like fantastical, light, magical things going on. I'm not sure, I saw Jen Campbell talk about this like a long time ago and I've been wanting to read it ever since and I could not believe I found it. It is beautiful. So I can't not wait to finally get to that one. I have Celestial Bodies by Joka Alaharthi. Ala yeah, Alaharthi. So this won the Man Booker International Prize, I think in 2019, yes. It was translated from Arabic by, let's see if it says who it was translated by, by Marilyn Booth. So you're following three sisters and you're following them and their families, their losses and loves, as it unspools beautifully against a backdrop of a rapidly changing Oman, a country evolving from a traditional slave owning society into its complex present. So that sounds really good. I, I want to read more translated work. 
and yeah if it won the man booker i'm sure it is amazing next book i found was follow me ground by sue rainsford this is a gorgeous book and i definitely heard about this book from books and lala this sounded so good it's like a horror book um a little bit of magical fantastical elements and i think you're following this uh dad and daughter which i love um books with dad and daughter dynamics like positive ones <laughs> they help they help heal bodies like through magical medicine but supposed to be really gruesome and horror does that not sound amazing oh it's signed oh cool the next one is the pull of the stars by emma donahue so this one is set during the great influenza in ireland yes in ireland and you're in a maternity ward and i've heard great things about this i like books set during pandemics which sounds crazy that we're in one but i always think they are the scariest things i've always said that i think a pandemic uh it's one of the scariest things that can happen so i'm curious to read about this one set during a pandemic but so long ago and i always find how medicine was in the past really interesting as well so i'm very curious about this i have heard that there are lots of gruesome scenes set in the maternity ward which ob guy is like one of my least favorite specialties <laughs> because it is horrifying <laughs> women are like amazing i don't know how women do, like push babies out and see sections and all that anyways yes this sounds amazing i just like books um i just think i'm gonna love this because it's like all everything that i love combined so i'm really excited to get to this one all right the last book in this little section is the southerners book guide to slaying the vampires by grady hendrix so i wasn't really interested in this book but i saw it at the thrift store for a good price and i have read uh a book by grady hendrix the my best friend's exorcism and i really liked it it was like kind of funny it got really intense towards the end. It was a good book. So I saw it and I was like, you know what? Let's just get it. This will probably just as, be just as good as well. Kind of funny, horror. I'm excited. This is really pretty uh, paper. So yes, we got that one. And I like how the actual book is like bright green. Oh, look, it says Town of Mount Pleasant Public Library, South Carolina. That is so cool. Oh, it's like you're in the book club. I'm guessing and you got it from the library that see I love his books are always like that it's so like detailed okay yeah so I'm more excited to read this one I've heard great things about this as well Whew. all right I just brought up more books <sighs> I'm tired all right we still have a bit more to go guys okay <laughs> so the next stack of books I kind of I forgot that I didn't forget that these were gifts but since I picked them out I like put them in the stack of books that I got but these were also um these were birthday gifts from my friend same one who got me all this christmas gift he got me i got to pick out five one two three four five yeah five books for my birthday the first one i got was the death of vivek og by akwaki emezi and this i know is like sort of a thriller i think a thriller set in nigeria and you're following a transgendered woman and i have heard like nothing but amazing things about this so i definitely want to get to it soon I also picked out The Removed by Brandon Hobson. This was one of my most anticipated releases. Um, Brandon Hobson is an indigenous author. I really love this cover. Yes, so one thing about this book that I didn't know, I just like picked it up because I thought it was about um, a family who was dealing with the death of their son, um, which it is, but I didn't realize that the son died at the hands of police which is a topic that is like something I don't necessarily no something that I don't want to read about you know everyone has that that like one thing that they just don't want to read about because it's like too much you just don't want to do it and um police brutality is one of those is like the thing for me that I don't want to read about so I didn't know that when I bought this book I like read the synopsis after I read it and it says he was killed by the police so i i am still gonna read it because i bought it and i'm sure it's like very important i'm gonna read this i just gotta make sure i'm in the right mindset for it so yes there's that one then i picked out luster by raven lalani which i loved this book i gave it uh five out of five stars you are following a 23 year old black woman in new york and she gets involved with an older married white man and comes to find out that this man and his wife have adopted a little black daughter and she gets all twirled up in their lives um it was amazing i loved it so much and it was long listed for the women's prize for fiction it is so good i definitely recommend it <laughs> i picked up girl a by abigail dean this was another like anticipated release it just sounded really good really really dark you are following a group of siblings who 
whose parents were terrible to them. It was like um, named the House of Horrors by the news. They were taken out. And then once the mom and dad die, they left the house to the children and the children are going back and I think dealing with the trauma and the past and all of that. Sounds really dark, but um, kind of good. <laughs> okay, and then the last one that I got in that little stack for my birthday that I picked out was Burnt Sugar by Avani Doshi. This book was incredible. I think right now this is like my favorite book of the year. I absolutely loved it. This takes place in India and you are following a daughter who is sort of dealing with all of the trauma that her mom kind of dealt with her. The mom joined this, the mom like wanted to be free, but she ended up getting pregnant and she ran away from her marriage, took the daughter with her and they kind of joined this cult. And you are like seeing, getting snippets of the past and the present. And in present day, the mom is dealing with, with some sort of illness. It's never uh, named, but it's sort of like Alzheimer's where her memory is going. And it was just incredible, dark, and I absolutely loved it. And this was also shortlisted for the Man Booker, for the, it's not Man Booker, I keep saying that. It's shortlisted for the Booker Prize and is currently longlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction. So it is incredible. I loved it so much. Next books are ones that I've just picked up. You're going to see I've been going crazy buying books. However, it is January, February, March, April. So four months worth, four months worth of books. So I guess if you look at it like that, it's not too bad, maybe. All right, so I'm just gonna like randomly just pick books and we'll just get started. We have Goldilocks. I'm gonna sit back, my back is starting to hurt. So I picked up Goldilocks by Laura Lamb. This is a science fiction. I have already read this and I will be having a 24 hour reading vlog for this going up soon. If it is already up, I'll link it for you guys. But this is a science fiction and you are following a group of female astronauts who decide to steal a spaceship and the hopes of saving humanity because Earth is dying. It was pretty good. I gave it three out of five stars, but I definitely recommend it. It was still good. Picked up Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, and I love this cover, although I wanted this edition from Book Depository. That is one thing about Book Depository is if you are trying to buy a specific um, like cover, you may not get it, which sucks. I really wanted that one, but this one's still cool, and if I like it, I will buy the other two in the trilogy in the same edition. I mean, hopefully it'll come <laughs> from Book Depository. But yes, this is also sci-fi thriller. And I think you're also following a group of female scientists and there's like a alien entity and they go into it and people keep getting lost um, and don't come back out. I did see the movie and it was really weird, but then I think reading the book will help clear it up a little bit. So there's that one. I got The Unbroken by C.O. Clark, which is a new release. This is a fantasy book and you're following two women. I, they're following, I think one is like an assassin. I'm not sure what the other one is, but I know they fall in love. So it's a sapphic love story, epic fantasy. And it, I know it's North African inspired. So it just sounds like an epic, amazing fantasy. <laughs> I got this nonfiction called The Disordered Cosmos, A Journey into Dark Matter, Space Time, and Dreams Deferred by Chanda Prescott Weinstein. I don't know why I said Weinstein. <laughs> this is um, one of my most anticipated releases. It just sounds right up my alley. It's telling us about her experience being a black astrophysicist, and she's also interweaving racism, sexism, and like dark matter all into one and just kind of sharing her theories and ideas about it. And I can't wait to read it. it sounds so great. All right, I got <laughs> The Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. Now, have I read any of these books in the series? I have not, but I really wanted this hardcover edition. I want to collect all of these in hardcover. I have the first book, uh, The Way of Kings in paperback, but I really want them all in hardcover. And so it was on sale for like an amazing deal. So I decided to just get it and just start my collection. You know, as book nerds, this is what we do. I mean, it is just gorgeous. Look at that. I could not not. So yeah, there we go. Next, I got The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This was another most anticipated release. It sounded so good. It sounded so good, but it didn't do it for me. This is following a woman back in the uh, 19th century. She is a secret apothecary and she dispenses poisons to women who want to kill their husbands or brothers or just men, anyone. Like she only kills men after they have wronged them. So you're following her and then you have a present day where a woman 
um, goes to London after her husband cheated on her and their lives kind of get intertwined. Yeah, it was a little disappointing. It wasn't a bad book. You may like it. it, just wasn't for me. But the cover is gorgeous and I love the premise so much. I got The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, which I have already read. I'll link a reading vlog down below. I think most people know what this is about. And I loved it just as much as everyone else did. All right, I got In the Quick by Kate Hope Day. I mean, look at this cover. This may be my favorite cover uh, this year. It is stunning. I love books about space and astronauts. So I saw someone on Instagram talk about this book and they were saying that they weren't enjoying it as much because it was too sciencey. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, wait, a book about astronauts? The cover caught my eye. And then of course I read the review she was like, yeah, I really like it, but there's, it's like a little too sciencey for me. And I was like, that sounds like my perfect book. <laughs> Astronauts, a lot of science talk. I think it's a thriller. So yeah, I mean, that's all I really need to know. I love this cover. Like, I would love this as a poster. It is so cool. Okay, we have that one. And then another most anticipated release is How Beautiful We Were by Emboli Mbu. I love this cover. So this is set in a fictional town in Africa. An oil, an American oil company comes to uh obviously get oil and i think the small town in africa is fighting back against that oil company so i'm really excited about this one i think it's a little bit sad but i'm excited all right we're almost getting there guys we are almost getting there the next two books are books that i got from my call number book box that my mom got me for Christmas. It is a quarterly book box and I did a whole unboxing of it. So I'll link it down below if you wanna check out more. Uh, it basically sends you books by black authors, which is really cool. And I get the contemporary uh, literary box. They also have like a YA box and a nonfiction box. So definitely check out that video if you wanna hear more. But the two books that I got were Milk, Blood, Heat by um, Dantille W. Monez. This is a collection of short stories following women in Florida and I think it's like really dark. That's what I saw about it. I'm really excited about this one. The cover's really cool. And then I also got His Only Wife by Peace Adozi Medi and this is set in Ghana and you're following. This supposed to be really funny and um, it says hilarious page turning sharply realized portrait of modern uh, womanhood. So I think about this woman who's getting married and she's trying to find her independence in Ghana and it sounds amazing. So we have that one. All right, next. I have Rosewater by Tate Thompson. I got this for Blackathon, which I did read and really loved. I will link the vlog where I read this down below. This is a first contact with aliens set in Nigeria, and it was so good. It's like really fast paced um, action. The main character is not very likable, but I still loved it anyway. Yeah, this is so good. Love it. So then we have Last Away by Darcy Little Badger. This is a young adult novel. It is gorgeous. In this world, they have like magical abilities. There are ghosts, there are vampires, and she is able to raise the dead as ghosts. And that uh, power is like a something that is taught throughout her family. It was actually really good. I really enjoyed it a lot. And it was uh, it's a beautiful book. Almost getting there. I have Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. I love the title. And this is another collection of short stories. I'm pretty sure this is fiction, um, all about women and their bodies. And I read a nonfiction book by her called uh, In the Dream House, and it was incredible. Um, so I've been wanting to read her other works. I'm very excited about that one. I have Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin. Um, this is a, another translated work. Yes, it was long listed for the Man Booker International Prize. Okay. Oh, she was saved by Megan McDowell. That's so funny. She is, I'm currently reading a translated work. Oh, which I need to go get that book because I also bought that. And she translated that one. Yeah, so this is actually translated from Spanish. And this you are following. So in this world, there are all these new little kind of robots and they look like little pandas. <laughs> I'll put a picture of the other cover here so you can see what I'm talking about um, there. But you can buy them and you can either be the person where the, it's like a little robot friend. You can be the person who just has a little robot, but then someone else anywhere around the world can control the little robot and like talk back to you. So I think it's a little like Black Mirror-y kind of thrillery. Sounds so good. Yeah, talking about it really makes me want to read it again. So I got that one. Next is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, another indigenous author horror that I really need to get to. Don't know what it's about, but I don't need to know. Just tell me it's horror and I'll probably want to read it. 
<laughs> Alright, and then the second to last book is A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. I've been wanting to read this book for a while. It was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction last year. That's where I find out about a lot of books that I want to read. Um, the Women's Prize for Fiction, the International Booker Prize, and the regular Booker Prize. That's where I find out about a ton of books. Um, so that's why I always mention it because that's where I discover these books. So this one, yes, it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction and you are following, it's set in the Trojan War and you are following all the women throughout the uh, Trojan War. So it's all the various women's perspectives who helped in the Trojan War and that just sounds amazing and I really love this cover. So yes, I'm excited to get to it. All right, the last book, I don't want to go all the way upstairs to get it, but it is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed and this is also translated work from Spanish. I am reading it now and it is a collection of short stories, horror stories, like they are, it's horror, definitely horror um, and creepy. And they're all so far all perspectives of women and it's set in Argentina. It is really good. I'm really enjoying it so far. So guys, there we go. I feel like this is going to be a ridiculously long book haul. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you discovered any new books. I had a ton and I feel like they were all kinds all over all genres. But yes, I'm so glad to finally get this out of the way so I can put all these books up and start packing and then I can move and we can set up my bookshelves. I'm so excited to finally like have my own space again and set up my bookshelves and all that is going to be fun. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this book haul. Let me know your thoughts and my battery is flashing at me so that means it's time for me to go. I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye!